all set. Yeah, I just need to get level so we'll level If each of you would count to five, please, first. Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. A little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah. Another five. One, two, three, four, five. That should be good. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You living in Flint now? One, two, three, four, five. Lapeer. Okay, I got Jim one more time, Jim. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that should be good. Hello, check. Okay, good. All set. All right. Yeah, it was, it's really icy up there. I know. All set? Yep, good. All right. Uh, Jeff, let's start off with, you sued the Jim Jones show after right. this debacle 24 years ago. Warner Brothers and their production company. Right. Telepictures. Telepictures. And you won a $25 million judgment. Right. And then it was overturned on appeal. Only because of the money. At that time, uh, we had had a Republican court take over the Michigan appellate courts, and they weren't going to let any verdict of that size uh, go through the courts. It's maybe recently changed, but we've had a, uh, a court system that's highly politicized, and uh, they were more interested in protecting corporations than individuals. But the symbol was important. So did you end up with zero? From that case, but the result was really profound in terms of the talk show industry. Those type of shows died out. Literally, I don't, it's, excuse the pun, but those type of shows uh, ended uh, as a result of uh, our lawsuit. The, uh, they understood that we uh, had won and would win again under similar circumstances uh, a verdict that big, so they dramatically and radically changed their ways. So in that sense, we won. Uh, money's, uh, again, only a symbol. It can never bring Scott back. Um, but uh, in this case, it wasn't a Pyrrhic victory. Uh, there was a real effect on this system. Which was one of my questions, and, and let me kind of take it a next step further. That's what the TV industry has done. Uh, do you think society, have we learned anything from this a quarter of a century later? Well, I don't see those type of shows. I really don't. I'm not sure we've learned anything. I think given the excesses of this society and the proliferation of the various medias, um, I guess there's a danger again of that occurring. Um, I haven't seen it. I don't really pay that much attention um, to this. But these type of shows I don't think exist. Well, Maybe I talked to somebody else who says there's the show Cheaters, where they go ambush somebody that they've caught cheating on a spouse. Mm -hmm or a significant other, there's that confrontation that could be explosive. There are still uh, you know, Jerry Springer shows out there where they'll bring unsuspecting guests on and hit them with some surprise. Mm -hmm. I don't know about those shows personally because I don't watch them, okay. but to the extent, uh, and if they do produce an explosive situation like the Jenny Jones show did, then for sure they are going to be held financially responsible, and, and there aren't uh, any changes in the laws that would protect them or that would prevent the type of lawsuit that we filed uh, against uh, the Jenny Jones show. It would, if it happens again, it'll happen again. In fact, let me take that back. To the extent, uh, for instance, some of these <coughs> shows expose uh, private facts like the uh, uh, wrestler, I don't remember his name. What was the wrestler's name? Uh, oh, I, uh, Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Hogan. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. I mean, he won a huge verdict against uh, a television show or a uh, gawker. Uh, maybe that was a website yeah, for exactly. exposing uh, private things. Now, nobody got hurt in that situation, um, but those type of lawsuits still exist. Okay. Yeah, I guess he put the company out of business. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, they shut down after that. They right. couldn't sustain after that. Um, so does you think back, set aside the legality uh, issues, uh, what do you remember as you look back a quarter of a century later? Well, there was profound national and international attention to the lawsuit, to what had happened, to the tragedy, um, and that uh, alerted people as to the dangers of, of this type of situation. Um, as you're aware, even 24, five years later, 
there's still interest in, in what happened and, and why it happened and, and what we've uh, learned or haven't learned as a result of that. So um, to that extent, and, and, and Frank and I were kind of living in that bubble, uh, we understood the, the attention that was being paid. Um, we didn't know f that it would continue and the interest would uh, be as long and uh, as uh, uh, just like what we're doing here, as long as this has gone on. Uh, we didn't know that, but I think that's a good thing, really. Yeah. Let's move over to Frank. Um, and you're, are you a junior, Frank Jr.? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, same question to you. Let's start there. We're a quarter of a century later. What runs through your mind after all of these years thinking back to your brother's case? Well, to be honest with you, it's it's still going on for me. Okay, it's it's not over yet. Uh, people, as as we was mentioned uh, moments ago, you know, the people are still interested. There's still companies contacting me, wanting me to do documentaries and and uh, the like. And it, it's like after all this time, and just like yourselves wanting to talk to us, it's, it's a long time. And, uh, and I guess it's probably going to last until maybe we need to hear the whole truth. The things that we don't know about. You know, there was a particular person in that courtroom uh, during the murder trials that we never heard his story, his, his words of what happened, what was said what went on. Uh, he got murdered too, but it was clearly premeditated. I mean, anybody could see that. I mean, he had all the time in the world to change his mind. He would made three stops on his way to my brother's house. You know, so, you know, the jury was real, as far as I'm concerned, lenient. Some suggest it was because of the gay part, and I don't know that that's necessarily true. I think it was more that they felt sorry for just how badly the show treated him and my brother and everybody else, the, the deception and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and when, you know, uh, all this was going on, it was like, uh, unless you were there in the courtrooms and hearing all the evidence and hearing all the testimony, People don't really have a clue as what really happened. And even though you might be there, in a way, we don't either because we haven't heard anything about what, what really happened with, from John. And so in getting into some kind of closure, it's been really difficult. You know, you got, he gets let out of prison and I got people calling me wanting to know what I think about him getting let out of prison and, so, and, and that kind of thing. And it's, well, you know, uh, it shouldn't have happened, regardless of even if the show, you know, he didn't have to kill my brother. You don't go killing people if they do things you don't want them to do or say or whatnot. But uh, the point was is that the show was one of the causes of his death. And essentially that's why the court, in my opinion, why the murder, why he got murdered too, okay? Uh, it, was, it was sympathy. And, and maybe he deserves some sympathy. I mean, it, it shouldn't have happened. You shouldn't have been tricked and lied to. You know, something people don't say much is uh, the name of the show even, you know, Secret Admirer, Same Sex Secret Crush. I mean, right from the beginning, that's just ridiculous. You, you tricked this man. You know, it may not be right to be homophobic or, or and like that, but when you know somebody's homophobic, you don't put them in some sort of a situation where they may react in the wrong ways because people do bad things over that kind of thing. Um, but all in all, I'd like to know what, what John's story is. I'd like to know what it is. And how, cause how can I say that he should be uh, given a chance to, to maybe continue his life uh, out here in the free world right now, I got to say, just based on what I know, no. Um, you know, uh, it, you know, I don't know all the, the facts though. 
even though you would think because I lived through three trials, including, including that, the civil side uh, trial. And, um, and so, uh, you know, it's, uh, something happened to me in that, in, in through that transition and uh, that ordeal, those ordeals, and um, I felt like there's some things that are undone that didn't get done. Something needs to be done, and I think that's to bring this story to light, perhaps in a book or a made-for-TV series or something to, to show all the things that went on and what we looked at and what we talked about. I mean, I know it was on uh, court TV, but, I mean, who gets to watch that? That's going to be your daytime people that aren't working mostly, uh, those kinds of things. So all, people all over the world were contacting me. Uh, people uh, from Australia, Great Britain, you know, contacting me. I had a website. It was called Scott's Memorial. And I had people contacting me all over the world talking about it. And I had people that were, you know, saying this and saying that. And, and I'm sitting here thinking about what really was going on and what I saw and how I feel about it because I was new to it too. You know, I didn't watch daytime TVs. I still don't. Although, unlike Mr. Feiger, I also know be, probably mostly from these people contacting me to do these documentaries is that they're still doing this stuff. Maybe not so much like they were, yeah, okay? Far but far you've got reality TV and all these different things doing things to people that's basically changing their lives and their families' lives and other people's lives that aren't even them by just doing it. So now I'm, I'm being asked to do documentaries and, and uh, I'm feeling like this is no different. This is no different. They want to get me on there to cry and ask me a few sad questions and try and get my little uh, uh, opinion on some things and try and, you know, hopefully I'll be emotional and, and those kind of th There's no difference here. The big difference is if you're going to do something like that, you should pay the person. Okay, you want to hear my story? You want me on a documentary? You want me to tell my soul? I should walk away with something. I've walked away with nothing, okay? My family is the only people that walked away with nothing in this deal, and people are continuing to make money off my brother. And so when they come to me, that's what I think they're doing. They just want to make more money off my brother. I think he's right. I think you are too. I want, a, I want somebody to help me make my life better. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's already. Is this a half hour special, or you? We no, get, I'm no. We get listen, he's, he's going through my list of questions. Okay, I don't, don't have to. to ask ask. I'm letting. You I kind of had a little agenda myself. Oh, well, I'm glad you're. <laughs> I'm glad you are because you're making my job a lot easier. You know. So. so you got enough. No, well, no, let yeah. me let me circle back just on a couple of points, Frank. Uh, you're very articulate, and I appreciate it. Uh, you touched on that Schmitz did get out a year and a half ago, and I heard you say you're living in Lapeer. You know he's living in Lapeer. Yeah. Does that make you uncomfortable? How do you respond? Well, to I'm not looking forward to bumping into him someday. Uh, I don't, it would be definitely awkward. I, it would probably be similar to when I, I saw his sister one day at a mall. You know, we kind of looked at each other. You knew who each And other we paused yep. and we just went our way. Okay. Um, if you had a chance to talk with him, you just indicated you'd like to know what his story is. Would you ask him? Well, I'd ask him like, what happened? You know, what did Scott talk to, talk about to him just prior to you killing him? When you shot, when you were shooting, my brother was that third shell intended for Gary Brady, the witness, or was it just, uh, you know, what were you going to kill yourself? Were you going to just unload some more shots into my brother? I, you know, because then, you know, when I know some of these things, then I know if he deserves to be out. You know, I didn't get to ask him questions uh, to see if he's been somewhat rehabilitated. Uh, I didn't get to find out. I don't know. He's liable to be just as homophobic or hateful as he was when he went in. Maybe worse, for all I know. Right. Um, and yet he lives uh, somewhere 
in the city I live in. And so does my family. I have family that lives up there and uh, all over Michigan. You know, so, you, you know, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a really strange situation. And, uh, but yeah, I'd like, I'd like to know, not necessarily that I want to have a conversation with them. You know, if I ever get some kind of uh, thing going where I'm doing a book, uh, I'd like to have the writer maybe sit with him and take down all his whole story. You know, so that's that's the missing element in your. Yeah, I, I got no closure. No, Many I, years ago, when all when this all died, and I don't know if it really has a lot to do with it, but it comes back to my mind all the time. Is one day when it was all kind of over in the court systems. You know, Mr. Figer sat down next to me, and he said, "Frank, if it's any consolation." Someday there'll be a book or a movie deal, and maybe it can make things a little better. It, it hasn't happened yet. I'm well, it could be. It's well, they are still. Is he's it? right, though. They're still oh, there's calling. There's still a lot of interest. I must have gotten five, six, seven calls this year about Frank's brother's case, Scott's case, and I Jenny. Do. I don't know why the interest is so great, but I'm, Frank's exactly right. I mean, they call a lot. More yeah. even than Dr. Kevorkian case. Yeah, well, and that's already, uh, you know, we know about right. the whole, you don't know Jack Louie and all of that. Frank, last question I have for you, and uh, I ask this to Jeff as well, and that is, have we learned anything from this? Not just, uh, you know, the television industry and the, the shock, the ambush and all of that, but uh, I'll just kind of ask you the broad question. Well, it seems like we mustn't have because, like I said, it, it sounds like, because like, like Mr. Freiger, I don't watch that, them shows either, but I know they exist, and I know there's still tragedies going on, you know, and like I said, they, and they, they affect a lot of people. They don't necessarily, and even our society, uh, in a big way, of course. You know, some of that stuff, it's just, they're trying to normalize things that just aren't normal. You know, and shouldn't be thought of as that way. But, um, you know, we we can't say you can't. Yeah, let me let me give sure. you. An I'll give you an insight into what I've realized. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not sure I had this insight uh, 25 years ago, only because I was younger. I was, we all were. That's right. Um, there is a willingness, and this started with. Uh, yeah, there. I'm sure there have been movies about this. There is a willingness of people, if you tell them they have the opportunity to get on camera and have their five seconds or five hours or five minutes of fame, you can get people to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily get them to do. And that must be some kind of weakness in the human condition or the human soul, um, because that's a, that's a very great power that cameras or the opportunity to have something in their life maybe that they don't think they have. And that type of power has to be exercised uh, correctly because it can be abused. It was abused here. Scott Amador and uh, Jonathan Schmitz didn't appear on that show for no reason whatsoever. They appeared on the show because there's an attraction of just ordinary folks to get in front of a camera and maybe they'll have their Ten minutes of fame. Maybe something good will come out of their life. But usually, as Frank says, it is nothing that you, you, we're just fodder for somebody else making money. And uh, that's more clear to me now than ever before. People want to be somebody. They and they think that they this think creates that it. that's their vehicle. They think that this creates it. I'll, and my only insight to you in that is, I've. Even though you're on television, I've done more television shows than you times 10 because of all the cases that I had. And I used to do different television shows five times a day for 20 years. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, it ain't what it's cracked up to be. It just isn't. There's other things in life besides getting your face on a camera. But you're right. They do tend to lead to other things. I'm sure that that 
helped you grow your business as an attorney? No, I would say more my success in the courtroom. However, I was, able to, yeah. I, I was able to uh, uh, speak in front of cameras, which most attorneys can't do because they're kind of tongue-tied, really, in fact. Um, but uh, um, If I recall, you were a theater major. Yeah, but believe me, the one thing I learned, I even told Frank, that the minute you start acting in front of a jury, you lost because they'll smell that out. Oh. So you're better being uh, on the psychiatrist's couch as a trial lawyer than you are going to a theater class. We digress. Well, I tell you what, though, that also is, I have to tell you, though, another reason that I did this interview today, because I've told the, I just told one today that I'm not going to do the documentary. But I appeared on this interview also to say what I had to say prior, but also to let you know that I do this because this man worked hard for my family, and though things didn't work out for us, he, I believe he worked as hard as any lawyer could, and I feel he's one of the best lawyers in, probably in the whole country, and I was proud of him. And I'll never forget those moments in those courtrooms when, when he just commanded the, the whole thing. I was in a movie for years. I felt like I was in this movie, you know. Um, he was an awesome Jenny, attorney. Jenny Jones on the <clears throat> you, she, she was able to sidestep some of it. And thankfully we have that on film because of court TV. That so should be played in every law school yeah. course of cross ex or direct examination, not cross, but direct examination. That's right. right. He, he's written the book. Oh, I didn't know. No, but in a, in a he's, he's being philosophical sense. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, Thanks. gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Frank.